So in the last video we have seen succinylcholine introduction and we have seen the chemistry of succinylcholine, we have seen the mechanism of action phase 1 block, phase 2 block. Uh, mainly what you have to know is succinylcholine is fast acting and short acting skeletal muscle relaxant. It has only two to, uh, 3 to 8 minutes of action. Okay. Let us look at the uses of succinylcholine. Considering that you give it and you have to, you have to uh, do some procedure within 3 to 8 minutes, right? So, let us look at succinylcholine uses. Okay, These are the uses of neuromuscular blockers. But I am speaking here about uh, skeletal muscle relaxin, relaxants which work for a short duration. Because it you, uh, works for short duration, you can't give it with general anesthesia at all. You can use it only for short procedures like endoscopy, diagnostic endoscopies. Okay, Endotracheal intubation that you will use uh, during anesthetic. If you want to insert the uh, endotracheal intubation for general anesthetic, so you can use it only for that procedure. Orthopedic manipulations, if there is some kind of a, you want to bring it back, the bone to the place, some things which are like uh, very painful, you can give the skeletal muscle relaxant, that is succinylcholine. Uh, these can be used in electroconvulsive therapy, that is ECT, electroconvulsive therapy to prevent trauma due to convulsions. So, if a person is having convulsions, you can give succinylcholine to prevent the trauma due to convulsions. Okay, not to treat the convulsions exactly. From yet another textbook, we have picked up some more uses. Please look at them of succinylcholine. It induces rapid, complete, predictable paralysis with spontaneous recovery in less than in approximately 5 minutes. Excellent intubating conditions that is relaxed jaw, vocal cords apart, immobile with no diaphragmatic movements. It's exactly what you want and it is giving you that. Relaxed jaw, vocal cords will be apart, immobile with no diaphragmatic movements is obtained within within 1 to 1.5 minutes you can achieve okay in case you want longer duration you can give it continuous iv infusion also continuous iv infusion if you want for longer duration can be done now let us look at the adverse effects of uh, succinylcholine as you know it has very short duration of action 3 to 8 minutes it is uh, hydrolyzed by pseudocholine esterases this at, at this time when there is skeletal muscle relaxation you can have transient apnoea okay because the muscles are relaxed however if the person has liver disease okay if the person has liver disease or if there is atypical pseudocholine esterase that means succinylcholine cannot be degraded in that case there is respiratory paralysis and there will be prolonged apnoea this is called as succinylcholine apnoea there is no antidote available. Look at this. There is no antidote available to succinylcholine apnoea. Therefore, you should give fresh frozen plasma in such a situation if it occurs. If you have fresh frozen plasma, then you should uh, give anesthesia till the person recovers from the neuromuscular block and you can also artificially ventilate the person. Now, let us look at the adverse effects continued of uh, succinylcholine. There can be muscle pain due to initial fasciculation. There can be muscle pain, okay, muscle, muscle soreness, Intre, increase intraocular pressure in the eye. There can be in the eye there can be increased intraocular pressure, okay, because the muscles are all relaxed, right? Skeletal muscles are relaxed. Then increased gastric pressure. You can see here there is increased intragastric pressure. Hyperkalemia, you should not forget this. Succinylcholine will lead to hyperkalemia. This is something that you have to remember. This should be like very important that you should know. Hyperkalemia because of succinylcholine. So, in case the person already has hyperkalemia, don't use succinylcholine. Use brocuronium. Especially if a person has burns, the intracellular potassium has come out and he has hyperkalemia. So, if the patient has burns, you should use brocuronium. Brocuronium. Bronium. Don't use succinylcholine. Now there can be bradycardia because of vagal stimulation. Succinyl apnoia we have already discussed, elaborated again uh, in the adverse effects. Then malignant hyperthermia when used with halothane, which is a 
general anesthetic right so you will uh, in this case wherever there is malignant hyperthermia you have to treat it with intravenous dantrolene so please remember this for malignant hyper hyperthermia to treat malignant hyperthermia give iv or just give dantrolene via iv dantrolene dantrolene via iv okay and you should also cool cool the person and give 100% oxygen to control and you have to control the acidosis also so what are the adverse effects of uh, succinylcholine muscle pain increased intraocular pressure increased intragastric pressure hyperkalemia bradycardia succinylcholine apnoea prolonged apnoea which we have already explained and there is no uh, treatment no antidote so you have to just treat with fresh frozen plasma anesthesia and ventilation okay then what else i was explaining malignant hyperthermia if there is malignant hyperthermia give IV dantrolene, the rapid cooling, inhalation of 100% oxygen and you have to control the acidosis, okay. We are going to end this video on succinylcholine uses and adverse effects. Now, uh, just before conclusion, we will give the comparative features of uh, succinylcholine and d tuba furarin, which is, which is a non-depolarizing neuromuscular blocker. However, Succinylcholine is a depolarizing neuromuscular blocker. Interesting thing to note here is succinylcholine is synthetic. It's a short acting 3 to 8 minutes. Initially, it causes flaccid uh, fasciculations, muscle twitches, and then it will cause fast flaccid paralysis. It causes release of histamine. This could be an adverse effect if um, uh, you can add it in the adverse effect. The, the phase 2 block, uh, it uh, resembles the non depolarizing block. And you can reverse it with the uh, administration of neostigmine. Neostigmine is an anticholine esterase, so it will increase the acetylcholine level in the neuromuscular ju uh, junction. So you can increase the, uh, remove the flaccid paralysis and go back to the contraction. Okay. Succinylcholine is preferred for short procedures like diagnostic endoscopies, endotracheal intubation. Uh, you know, after general anesthesia, you want to give it. Then orthopedic manipulations also you can use it. Next. Uh, adverse effects we have we can write now d tuba curanil is a natural alkaloid it is long acting it causes flaccid paralysis it also causes release of histamine and neostigmine even reverses uh, d tuba curanil effect it can be used in adjuvant to general anesthetic <coughs> okay so in this video what and all we saw we saw the uses of succinylcholine then we saw the adverse effects of succinylcholine like increased intraocular pressure, hyperkalemia, increased intragastric pressure, bradycardia, <coughs> prolonged apnoia. It's also called as what? Succinylcholine apnoia. You should write that. Then we saw malignant hyperthermia. We can treat it with IV dantrolene. Right? That's all we wanted to cover in this video. The uses and the adverse effects of succinylcholine. It's also called a supsamethonium. Right, it's called supsamethonium. Okay. So the other uh, drug which is like succinylcholine is decamethonium. Supsamethonium and decamethonium. That covers uh, succinylcholine. Important question has been covered.